I've always wanted to do a shiny only Nuzlocke of a Pokemon game, but I don't have the patience to shiny hunt and that's a big problem. So instead, I present to you YouTube's first Greedlock. So you're probably sitting there thinking, what on earth is a Greedlock? A Greedlock is a randomized hardcore Nuzlocke, but with two major rules added. The first rule is that you can only use shiny Pokemon. And the second is that you're constantly under the effect of the Greed Charm. I'd like to assume that we can work out what rule one means, but what exactly is a Greed Charm? Well, imagine a shiny charm, but instead of completing the Pokedex, you need to promise your firstborn to the Dark Lord Ishmael. Excuse me, why? Let me explain. The Greed Charm will make your shiny odds 1 in 500, or 0.002%. That's pretty good! But in return, a single death in the run spells game over and you need to start again. Oh no! But not only that... Oh good! There's more! For each soul offered to the Dark Lord Ishmael, one more additional aspect of the game will be randomised. From random abilities, types, base stats, or even the PP each move has, essentially the more you fail, the more chaotic, volatile, and corrupt the game becomes. Good luck! To start off, we need to pick a starter. The choices are Lotad, Weedle, and Lavatar. At first, I decided that Lotad would be the best choice since water is very abundant in Hoenn, so super effective grass moves and a quad resist would have been beneficial. Not too long after that though, I noticed how incredibly stupid I am for forgetting that this is a randomizer. With this new information, I decided to set my sights on a baby pseudo legendary, and after a shockingly low amount of 62 resets, we got the Green Bean Boy. Sorry, a green bean girl. We call her Arkin and proceed on. Defeat the rival and obtain the Pokeballs. This is where the Nuzlocke part of the Greedlock begins, and so does our next shiny hunt. We had Pokemon like Weedle, Tyrogue, and Why Not, but in just 10 encounters, yes, 10, we encountered this. And it's not really anything that I would decline in this patch of grass. Maybe the Why Not. I mean, we had Weedle. Excuse me? Duffy the Pichu is Pokemon number two, and this run is going swimmingly. Not for long. Excuse me? Nothing. We fought through the game until we got to the first gym, and this is a good opportunity to actually tell you how these gyms are going to work. Instead of every Pokemon being completely random and me having absolutely no strategy, just like the base game, every gym is going to have a specialized type, and then the random Pokemon come from within that typing. With this in mind, it's optimal to first fight a gym trainer to gather intel about the gym's type, and then rush into the gym leader. It's a good thing that we did this because Snowrun informs us that Roxanne is going to be an ice type specialist, something that my team doesn't really want to take on at the moment since my main girl hates it cold. With no other decent option, we have to go and shiny hunt another team member before taking on the gym. I proceed down Route 116 to shiny hunt in Ross Turf Tunnel with the hopes of getting something that can deal with ice types effectively. Ah, oh, f***ing dicks. Not exactly what I hoped for, but I guess our hand has been dealt. We call the C-Dot Pringle and then evolve her straight away into a Nuzleaf. Girl, where's your modesty? With our new, um, ice-type counter, it was time to take on the first gym leader of the run, Dudley. She leads Smoochum, which is a sight for sore eyes because, pff, it's a baby. Ah, oh, A couple of Thundershocks do a decent amount as we take a pound in and get confused by Sweet Kiss. After Duffy hit itself and another pounding, we're a bit low for my liking. Arkin comes out and easily dispatches the Smoochum. Snowrun is Roxanne's second Pokemon as it raises its ev <laughs> as it raises its evasiveness. We go for the Screech Root, hoping to lower its defense enough before it realizes that it could just use an Ice type move and we would be in trouble. Looks like it remembered. Time to switch. Pringle comes out to a freshly healed up Snowrun, which is just fan bloody tastic. That is. Because of the Screeches earlier, Swift does amazing damage and all the cone does is leer. A cheeky second potion isn't enough to save the Bollard as out comes her ace in the form of Sneasel. It goes for a turn 1 Torn which is okay since Bide is considered an attacking move. A Screech and a quick attack later and we retaliate with huge damage getting the one hit KO. I'm pretty sure that's the first time I've ever used the move Bide successfully. Gym 1 is done by the skin of our teeth. We picked up Cut and proceeded with the story until we reached Duford. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling an extra encounter before we tackle Brawly. We ran through the dark cave, made our delivery, and then got to work hunting. About 8 minutes later, and this happened. <gasps> Ooh, 
real fun. Ooh, I take that, I take that. Grimer is such a fun Pokemon that I very rarely get to use, so Lemon is a very welcome addition to the team, even if we now have three Pokemon weak to ground. And look, all females, that's pretty neat. With our new squad assembled, it was time to take on challenge number two, but not before boosting our team to the level cap, evolving Duffy in the process. I did dip into the gym before the cave just to find out what type it is, and it's a fighting gym. It starts off with Metatype vs Duffy, we confuse the Onion Monkey Child, and then it gets greedy with the texts. It was cleanly taken out with a couple of hits, and then Broly pops his ace early. Duffy puts in some great work, getting it down to half HP, dropping its attack harshly with charm, paralyzing it with static, and saving the entire run by surviving on 2 HP and a dream. Vital Throw is doing next to nothing to our citrus scented blob as we boost plus 6 evasiveness. Obviously, it doesn't really help with the onslaught of Vital Throws, but it will help for his final Pokemon matchup. A missed Karate Chop later, and the badge was ours. Next up, we have some more shiny hunting to do, but I decided to make it to the next gym first, scout out what type it is so we can be a bit more tactical on what we go after. A Wooper and a Chin Chow tell us that it's a water gym, so, you know, grass, electric, that type of thing. Well, as I was testing out patches of grass, there was this one place that seemed to be giving amazing options like Weeping Belt, Magnemite, and even Lombre, but this is what we got after 12 minutes. I don't like that. Not for the next gym. I mean, we do need a water type, I guess, but... Ah, uh, f**k, wait. Special physical split. It's Gen 3. It hasn't happened yet. So, our water type can't even use water type moves effectively. Ah, oh, f**k. <laughs> Look, Kim the Krabby may not be the best option for us. Heck, it may not even be the best option in this patch of grass, but it's gonna be fine. Right? No. Wait, what? I'm just foreshadowing. Nah, we got this. On to Watson, and Kim manages to solo not only the Love Disc, but also the Wing Goal, but red HP does mean that we need to swap out to Duffy. Water Gun doesn't do too much, so we hit a Thundershock, but unfortunately that doesn't do too much either. Did it happen? F***ing <laughs> dicks. <laughs> nice. This time around, the starter options were Pidgey, Wisma, and Routes, so it's pretty much decided from the get-go. First of all, Wisma's shiny is very boring, especially when it evolves, so that's out. Now to all you folks out there yelling Routes because Gardevoir is undoubtedly a goat, need I remind you that Routes at level 5 only knows Growl, and that is a surefire way of scoring an early loss against the randomized Zigzagoon, let alone the first rival battle which, unlike the previous two generations, you have to win to progress by the way, so our starter has to be Pidgey. It would only be 13 resets before we see Sparkles, the issue is that they're on the wrong bloody side. It would take another 28 minutes for us to see another shiny, and this time it was the Golden Grammy that we're looking for, with uh, Drought. We'll keep the start of this run rather short, since, you know, we've already done it. We caught Riddle, the Liquid Ooze Azaril, watched my dad lend Wally the world-ending Leviathan so he can catch an insect, caught Dodger, the adamant-natured, compound-eyed pink whooper in the forest, and then made it to Roxanne, the fighting specialist. Mankey was nice and easy to take down, and then she sent out the ace Medicham. This may seem scary at this point in the game, and that's because it is. We chipped it down slowly as it suddenly hit us with a powerful confusion. Being risky, I decided to quick attack through the confusion, but it was all calculated, I got this. Matchup was up and we had to pass the baton to Dodger, who managed to beat Roxanne's final Pokemon with brute force. We did the story bits again, making it to Dewford, I popped into the gym to check what type it is, and the Dratini told me everything I needed to know. I need an ice type. We went into the cave and by Jove it's a swine up. A mere six minutes later and we had Rutger the thick fat humbug. We boosted our team to the level cap, evolved Grammy and then fought Broly. I hope you're not expecting Peach Hour levels a strategy because for Dratini I went full Oonga Boonga and just clicked mud shot until the health bar goes away. He sent out a second Dratini which isn't really that surprising since his options are very limited at this point in the game. This one however is level 19 so it is the ace. It hit a lot harder than the previous one, especially when you bloody flinch me, you trifle flavoured boggart. We sent out Rutger, who must have put in the Konami code or something, because you don't see that every day. We then take a snowball fight a bit too seriously, and we do kill his Bagon. So what happened after the gym? Well, Dodger become a beacon of perfection, and Riddle also evolved. We also, however, made it back to Watson. This time around, he seems to be fond of grass types, and things went a lot smoother. We led Dodger, who is very allergic to plants, but it doesn't matter when the Oddish misses a stun spore. Two shots later, and it's taken down by our weird-looking dog. 
Next up is Ludicolo, who I can't help but notice isn't the ace, and that is quite scary. Grammy tanks and absorb, and then manages to just about 1v1 the racial stereotype with several gust attacks. Another Oddish comes out, so we go into Rutger, who's stunned. Even though it's super effective, Powder Snow leaves a lot to be desired, but we do eventually take down the Radish, leading to the ace of the gym, Cradilly. This thing is a wall. We squeeze as much damage as we can out of our little humbug before switching to Dodger, since Cradilly obviously lacks a damaging grass move. From there, we do what Dodger does best, and we mud shot it until it dies. Do you think it's time for a new Pokemon? I think it's time for a new Pokemon. Do you know who doesn't? The game. It took me 2,000. 512 encounters to find a shiny. Albeit that's still very quick compared to full odds, I'm not playing full odds. I'm 1 in 500. We were five times over odds here and I was just about ready to give up. It's a really good job I didn't know because our patience was definitely rewarded with this. <gasps> yes, it's over. Oh, I can play the game again. I'm not even reacting to the fact that we just got a Cyndaquil, I'm reacting to the fact that I can actually play the fucking game again. Desmond is an amazing Pokemon to find, and it's my favourite starter. We evolved it straight away into one of the coolest middle stage starters, and then we climbed up the volcano to stop one of the most stupid people in Hoenn. Magma leader Joe was rather easy, Mudshot for the Survivor, Magical Leaf for the Kabutops. Oh yeah, Desmond can do that. Apparently TM compatibility is random as well. And then we used one more on the floor sh After following an online guide on how to navigate through Flannery's gym, because I can't be bothered to work it out myself, we throw hands and took her on. The flavour of this gym is Bug, which is absolutely fine with me. Venonat poisons Grammy, which is very rude, but easily taken down. Spinarak is incredibly... nothing. Shuckle does what Shuckle does best and acts like a big old wall. It also has colour change, so we couldn't spam the same move over and over again. I had to turn it into a ground type with mud shot and then water gun it, rinse and repeat a lot until it goes down just in time. Her ace is Pinsa, so we switch into our beautiful new weasel, who takes the beetle down with a couple of sun-boosted embers. Nicely done. Normally, we'd shiny hunt for a new team member, but after that last hunt, I honestly can't be f Instead, our own dad starts throwing hands. Dad is a still type gym leader and sends out Aaron. I decide to lead with Grammy to set up the sun and then pivot straight into Dodger. I do kind of misclick and slam it, which does nothing, but a couple of mud shots later and the Aaron does go down. Now, Skarmory is one big hard counter for Dodger, so it's up to Desmond to Oko it with Flame Wheel. And then the scariest thing about Metang is that it's not even the ace Pokemon. I decide to switch out to Dodger on the Metang's healing turn in order to preserve Desmond and its sun boosted Flame Wheels for the said ace Pokemon. The Metang goes down and it turns out that Daddy is packing heat. Daddy chill. Dodger manages to get off two mud shots before switching out to Desmond, who finishes it off with a flame wheel. So that's our own father humiliated. I don't think I can get away with not shiny hunting again. We continue the game until we hit Lily Cove and then we ran around this patch of grass until this happened. I mean, the only Pokemon that I've seen in this grass that I don't want is Barboach because it would just be a no- Oh, hello. <laughs> Never mind then. Shep is fine. Shield Dust is a really good ability, especially on a Clefable. However, getting a Clefable is pure RNG at this point since all items are randomized. Getting a Moonstone isn't very likely, so I'm not sure how much help this little pink donut is going to be. Someone who is going to be helpful though is Desmond, who is now a beautiful red Typhlosion, and seeing this sprite only reinforces how much they butchered this Pokemon's aesthetic in later games. If the 3D model actually kept the vibrant dark red instead of this reddish brown, I'd value it so much more, but I could honestly rant about the injustices of Typhlosion until the mill tanks come home, so let's move on. Get it? Move on. So with our new Volcanic Mustela Day, we beat Maxi who forgot what colour Groudon was, we caught a Ghastly in the ocean and then evolved it all the way up to a Gengar, and say what you want, Gen 3 and prior Gengar has an amazing shiny, I'm gonna die on this hill. Do you know what scares me the most in Nuzlocks? Double battles. Ah f As you can tell, Tate and Liza are ground specialists. I decide to kick things off with some status moves, confusing Nidoqueen and yawning the Clay Doll. I focus fire on the Clay Doll because I'm scared that it has explosion or something similar, and I don't want Dodger to be caught up in that. All the while, Nidoqueen is taking collateral damage from the Surfs. Asaya keeps up the status conditions when Rhydon comes out, Dodger continues to deal massive damage with Surf, and then the royal family are reunited. Unfortunately, Dodger did take a hefty body slam and got paralyzed, so we have to switch him out. We focus down Nidoking as the Queen sleeps, and then it's as simple as a 2 on 1. 
It took a while because of Hyper Potion spamming, but Nidoqueen's inability to do anything else other than Poison Stinger Sire made it a guaranteed win. We got the Mind Badge, and that's pretty cool, but I wonder what TM we're gonna get. You should totally do it. I shouldn't do it. The game continues with no issue. We battle alongside Steven, forget where to go, remember where to go without any external help. Oh shit! Don't look at that. What the fuck? <laughs> what have you been doing? Don't blame this on me. Archie goes down without a problem as he tries to awaken Kyogre, and bro, do you want one? My dad's giving him out in Petalburg. Because of the two teams' insolence, the world's end is upon us, but wait, what if there's a really large, overrated worm that could save us? Stop it. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And just like that, Rayquaza saves the day. Are you gonna shiny hunt it? Sorry, what? You're gonna need to shiny hunt Rayquaza. It's kind of expected of you. Fine. Right, okay. What Pokemon is Rayquaza gonna be? Come on, be hype. Oh, okay. Hey, there we go. Rune the Charizard would be an amazing Pokemon to have on the team, but clearly it's massively overleveled at the moment and pretty much will be for the rest of the game, so it's to the box with you. But now it's time to take on the final gym leader, not Wallace. Juan is a dark gym leader and sends out Sharpedo. It taunts us, but our plan is to earthquake the stumpy shark and it does go down. A second water dark type, how original. Protect only stalls time, but Dodger's brute force is too much and it takes it down. The Mighty Enna also tries to taunt us, but yet again, Dodger is having none of it. A second Crayfish comes out, so we switch into Grammy to set up the sun. Hopefully there's no Houndoom on his team. We then used Fly to avoid his protects and took it down nice and easily. Absol takes a few hits, but then it seals its own fate with a Perish Song. Nice and easy. After we get the badge, the police knock down the door and arrest Juan for keeping some girls in his basement. But that's not my problem, I'm still debating whether to do one more shiny hunt before the Elite Four. But it turns out I didn't have to. Whilst exploring the map, we got lost again. Okay, whilst getting lost again, we ran into this beauty of a Pokemon. We snatched it up very quickly and called it Kevin. Kevin entered his final form, and we unfortunately have to say goodbye to Riddle, the best HM slave a trainer could ask for. We investigated Kevin, and the bloody Feraligator has Lightning Rod, granting it a single weakness to grass. Not only that, but randomized TM compatibility gives him an amazing spread of moves, so Kevin is going to be an incredible asset to the endgame. First up for the Elite Four is the bug trainer Liliana. I decide to kick things off the way the run started, with our golden sunbird Grammy. Sword Dance is scary, but if you're okoed by Fly, there's not much you can do with it. We could click Fly again, but I predicted a powder move which Desmond can deal with effectively thanks to Shed Skin, and I just thought about the mental image of Typhlosion shedding its skin, and that is bloody ghastly. Shed Skin, however, doesn't prop just yet as a sun boosted flame will gets the Oko. We then witness what might be the only viable way to use Water Sport, but then it lets its team down by just using Gust, and you're not winning any fights at this level doing that. Pinsir goes down to a single Flame Wheel, but then Power Hacks means we have to switch out to Grammy again. Fly does great damage, but it misses out on the KO by a small. Oh, never mind. Elite 4 member. <coughs> sends out Houndoom as we lead a tanky Dodger. At this point, I don't know whether it's a Fire or a Dark Specialist, but Dodger puts in the work and takes down the Glass Cannon. Torkoal is taken out by Dodger's Brute Force, and Blaziken is taken down to 1 HP. There's no reward great enough for a risk at this point, so we switch into Kevin, who takes out the chicken, but struggles with a duck. Desmond tags in, who hits a Swift, getting the KO. Swift doesn't do as much as I'd like to Rapidash, so we switch out to a Sire and then pivot into Grammy. A few hits later, and the horse was put down. Next up is normally a specialist device, but don't be fooled by Sneasel, she is packing dark types. We lead Dodger who tanks a hit and then forces a full restore nice and early with a hard hitting earthquake. Houndoom hits hard but Dodger hits harder. Sableye has no weakness in this generation so it's a matter of switching to Desmond and just hitting it over and over again until it goes down. Tyranitar is terrifying in the best of situations and Rock Slide does over half to Kevin. I'm not mentally prepared to restart this game. We take a gamble that Kevin outspeeds, and luckily he does. Superpower is quad effective and easily enough to take out the Godzilla. Even with the stat drops, I decide to stay in and hit Houndoom with another superpower. Could I have switched out safely to another Pokemon and dispatched the Houndoom? Yes. 
Does it make for good content if I don't do that and take a gamble? Also yes. We then switch out to Grammy who takes out the dog with an extreme speed. The penultimate battle is against the electric specialist, Pit again. We lead with our trusty tank Dodger who takes a hefty hydro pump but does get the Oko with an earthquake. Electabuzz does a small amount of damage with Swift, but we use our last Earthquake PP to get another KO. Rutger switches in as Electrode sets up a light screen, Swift does nothing as Dig hits hard. Seeing no other option, Electrode blows up, but it's not enough to take out our Porky Pig. A second Electabuzz comes out, so we pivot to Desmond who takes a Swift well. Flame Wheel does decent damage and gets the burn. We're taking no chances after a Screech, so we switch into a Sire who gets one more hit and then watches the Electabuzz fall to a burn. Here's the big boy, we switch into Desmond who dodges a Thunder, a Thunder Wave connects and Flame Wheel does next to nothing because of Light Screen, Thunder does connect this time doing concerning damage as we chip away, getting the burn before switching into Dodger. Since we're now a ground type we know it's not going to use an electric move so it's safe to switch into Grammy who avoids a pin missile. The plan was to extreme speed and finish it off but the surprise Citrus Berry throws that plan out the window for now. Knowing a Thunder is coming our way, we switch into Dodger, pivot back into Grammy who avoids yet another Pin Missile. The Jolteon is then weak enough for me to gamble in extreme speed and finish it off. Time for the big boy of Hoenn or the boy boy of Hoenn if you listen to the typos on my script. Whatever you call him, he's gonna be a mixed specialist. I don't really like when champions have a type speciality because it just makes it too easy to prep for. But in terms of the battle itself, Kevin comes out to a Porygon 2 who goes down to a single superpower. Due to the stat drops, we switch to Rutger as the plant ingrains. We miss a Blizzard and take some damage, but then Amnesia raises its special defense, so Blizzard then doesn't do much at all. We switch into Kevin as the plant continues to bulk up its special defense, but that doesn't matter if we just punch its face in the face. We're annoyingly confused, so we switch into Grammy and then pivot back into Kevin. By then, the Cray Dilly has been fully restored, but a superpower changes that. No confusion this time, so a second superpower whacks the prehistoric weed. The boy boy of Hoenn sends out an inferior Grammy who tries its best but Blizzard does huge damage. He then heals it up and switches to Agron who takes a Blizzard annoyingly well. Dodger does wall Agron in terms of defense but unfortunately without Earthquake PP we don't really have the offense that we need. Instead we put Agron to sleep with a yawn and then switch into Kevin. With our last PP you know what we're gonna do. The Tyrant is taken down and then the False Bird comes back out. Unfortunately for it, its own drought ability only increases Desmond's fire damage. A couple of flame wheels later and it switches out again. Waylord doesn't really care about flame wheels that much, but Kevin doesn't care about water spouts. The unique thing about Kevin is that due to TM randomization, he can generate his own thunderbolts. A couple of them later and the big blob goes down. The bird comes out yet again, so we switch into Desmond who finally puts an end to this foul mockery. Boy Boy Hoeen's final Pokemon is Wigglytuff who doesn't quite go down to two flame wheels but that cheeky little burn is enough to end this battle and this run. There we have it, we've logged a Hall of Fame with no deaths using only shiny Pokemon but you didn't think that was it right? Of course not. There's one more hurdle in the way and one more teammate who wants to join the battle. We've climbed this mountain, now with our team at its best it's time to... Oh fuck off, Huntail. It's finally time to take on the true boy boy of Hoenn. We lead our trusty Dodger once more and it's the perfect matchup. Earthquake gets the two shot and out comes Dusclops. It sets up a future site but it goes down to two more Earthquakes. Tauros is rather intimidating, especially since we've got future site damage incoming. Kevin takes the hits well and deals huge damage with superpower, but it is time to switch out. Desmond takes the thrash and then finishes off the ball with a flamethrower. Flygon does kinda wall Desmond so we switch into Rutger who eats a dragon breath and then Oko's with the blizzard. Magneton is an interesting choice so we dig and get the Oko, nice and easy. Lastly is Blissey. Strength does decent damage considering it's a Blissey but we switch into Rune. We hope for a critical slash but no luck. We continue to whittle it down hit by hit but then it's fully healed. None of Rune's attacks are getting through to this egg so we switch to the trusty reliable Kevin. We tease it with a Thunderbolt, get taken down to the red just for a dramatic finale, but then Kevin releases a huge superpower. Despite the defense increases the Blissey had, superpower depletes its health bar and wins us this run. For real this time.